Welcome to U.S. History Regents Review. This is Unit 1. We're going to be doing several videos to review this unit. It's a rather large unit. It includes settlement in the 13 colonies, the Revolutionary War, the creation of government, and the big one, the Constitution, with an overview of government in general. Because remember, this is the United States History and Government exam. So this is just the first part. Feel free to pause, uh, take notes if you need to. I recommend doing practice questions after each section as you review. But keep in mind that these videos are not going to be comprehensive. They do not include every single possible thing you could be asked, but they absolutely hit on the most key parts, the big takeaways you should have from the unit. Let's go ahead and get started. American Indians were here first. There are, as you can see on this map, several different Native American groups that all had very different cultures depending on their geography, who they did or did not interact with. Um, they had a unique culture. Most of these are groups based on tribe, um, kinship networks are important. They're more egalitarian. Uh, we see both farmers, like uh, the Iroquois did some farming, but also hunting. More nomadic tribes eventually developed out west. When we think of the history of interaction between these native groups and the Europeans, after 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue, the Spanish are the first to colonize Latin America. They show up in Central and South America, create their colonies. That's why they speak Spanish down there. And the French go up and colonize Canada. So again, that's why parts of Canada actually speak Canadian today. So they really arrive here first, but eventually England also joins in on colonizing. But before the English get here, um, and what, after the first settlers get here, a lot of the, the Spanish, the conquistadors, there is already a lot of death. Interaction with white Europeans has devastating consequences for native peoples. Most Indians on this continent, some historians say up to 90%, die because of European diseases and eventually from a lot of violence. Other important themes that are going to be from here on out. Settlers take the land and displace the Indians. We're going to see as they arrive, they're going to keep getting pushed further and further westward as the colonies and eventually the states expand west. And while there are some positive interactions between these settlers and the natives, uh, for example, a lot of trading, there were a lot of fur traders. Um, up in Canada with some of the native groups. Um, and some of the other colonists got along well. If you remember your, your stories about Powhatan and the first Thanksgiving or Pocahontas, there, there are some friendly interactions at first, but these become increasingly more violent. And for the first settlers, the first couple hundred years of American history, there is a lot of conflict along the borders, again, as settlers continue to go west. Now, who settles here and why? There are different motives for coming to the new world. They are often referred to as the three Gs, gold, God, and glory. Specifically, if you look at this map over here, we typically talk about the colonies as being three different regions. We have New England in the north, the middle colonies, and the southern colonies. The first colony established is going to be in Plymouth Rock in Massachusetts. The pilgrims come here for religious freedom. They want to escape persecution of their group and practice their Christianity their own way. We will also see the Jamestown colony settled. And this is settled by a company, so they have economic motives. The Virginia company wants to make money they send people over to look for gold. They're unsuccessful in finding gold. Most of them starve those first few winters. Um, but eventually they figure out how to grow tobacco and start to earn money from these cash crops. 
Massachusetts Bay Colony is another colony that is settled um, partially for religious freedom, but also a lot of these people want an adventure. A lot of people are looking for a completely new way of life. There is land available in the new world, something that a lot of people in Europe could not get access to, especially people from poor um, social classes or who just could not inherit the family land because usually firstborn children would get land. So this is seen as a place of opportunity for many, although a lot of hardship is included in that. The colonies all develop differently depending on geography. This is a huge theme. Geography affects settlement and development and the economy. So we see up north, like these areas, uh, it's way colder. As you know, it's colder up north. So growing seasons are short. However, there are a lot of rivers and rivers equal water power, which is going to lead to manufacturing starting to develop up, up north. Now, most people are still farmers. Keep that in mind. There is farming up north, but manufacturing almost exclusively is developing up north at first because of water power, and because there's access to things like timber. A lot of forests are up here. A lot of trade develops up here. A whole merchant class, um, ports like Boston and New York, develop around trading and make their money that way. But then in the south where the weather is warmer and there are long growing seasons, the soil is not so rocky, they are going to develop plantations. These are large farms, large scale farming, and they will depend on cash crops, such as tobacco and indigo, rice, and later cotton. And of course, places like this need a workforce, so they are going to get slaves. Other important things about the 13 colonies. In particular, how do they start to develop their sense of identity, their sense of government? It starts off with the reminder that these are British citizens. These are people from England. So a lot of their ideas come from England and their parliament. So their parliament is a type of, it's a constitutional monarchy that they have in England with limited rights. I'm sorry, limited power for that monarch. And they have an English Bill of Rights, which is going to influence how they think about what rights a citizen should have. There are ideas of self-government. This is a popular regent's question. Um, remembering that the Mayflower Compact, the people who came over on the Mayflower sat down together and they created a document that they all agreed upon for how they were going to govern themselves. The Virginia House of Burgesses is an example of a legislation, a legislature that was in Virginia where the people got together and voted, made decisions. And in New England, there are town hall meetings where they heard the voice of the people. So these early democratic ideas, ideas about representative government, self-government are all available here. We also see examples of freedom of religion early in the colonies for example, the Maryland Toleration Act and freedom of the press. That is an example sometimes the regents will reference with the John Peter Zanger trial. So these are people who already have ideas about having rights and having a say in their government even before we become an independent nation. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Southern colonies in particular are going to need a labor force as well as the other colonies. This starts off as indentured servitude. Indentured servants are people who work for a set amount of time in exchange for passage on a ship um, and oftentimes help getting set up in the new world. These contracts would often be about five to seven years long. Uh, and these were usually young white people. So Europeans who, again, are looking for opportunities that they don't have in the old country. This system, however, is eventually completely replaced by a system of slavery. We're talking about black African slavery. Africans were kidnapped and sold as part of the triangular trade between Europe, the colonies, and Africa. And on this journey called the Middle Passage, about a fifth of them die. Keep in mind, slavery existed in all colonies, but primarily in the South because of the plantation economy that was there.